One of the searches that come out recently is the CompTIA Security X. Now I am on stream right now, and the cool thing about my videos is I make these videos based on questions people ask on stream. So someone said, hey Tyler, what are your thoughts on the Security X by CompTIA? And I don't have any initial thoughts yet. So what we are gonna do, I just pulled it up for the very first time. I've only read a little bit about it, haven't dug deep into it. So I'm gonna give you my initial raw, unfiltered thoughts on the Security X by CompTIA. Hopefully this goes without saying, but this is not a sponsored video. I don't do sponsored videos. This may benefit CompTIA, it may not. I have no idea. Let's dive in, let me share my screen and let's look at this together. And for those of you watching the live stream, let me know your thoughts, what you think about CompTIA Security X. So it's formerly the CES P plus, which I think is their more advanced, um, like CISPI equivalent. I think, I don't know for sure. Now I did some CompTIA exams when I first got into the field. So this would have been 2020 is I think 2020 or 2021 when I first got into the field and I got the A plus network plus security plus and project plus by CompTIA because they were required as part of my degree at WGU. So I knocked all of those out. So let's see what exactly this covers. So it says, it is an expert level cybersecurity certification for security architects and senior security engineers, charges leading and improving an enterprise's cybersecurity readiness. So it seems to be CompTIA's answer to the CISSP by ISC squared. I'm curious, is it a technical exam? Or is it more theoretical exam? Let me know in chat if you guys know, but I'm curious what it all does. So it's just a rebrand, it looks like. Uh, do they change anything else? Blah, blah. Will not affect the certification status. Now, the thing that is true about CompTIA exams, and I'm guessing it's true about this, is they all require renewals and CEs and all of that stuff. I made a whole video on my thoughts on cert renewals, and uh, in summary, I don't like them. I... I do enough things to renew my search, but I'm not gonna waste my time submitting stupid CEs to some cert body so my search can be renewed. One of the things I really liked about the OSCP is it was a lifetime. And I guess it still technically is, they have the OSCP plus, and if you don't renew it in three years, it just downgrades to a regular OSCP, which is what I have. All my other certs, like I have search from ISC squared, I have the CCSP, the Certified Cloud Security Professional, I think the SSCP, I honestly, I don't even remember all the different certs I have, but all of them have expired because I'm not gonna waste my time or my money renewing a cert. Like I can prove I can do the job by doing the freaking job. And in my opinion, that is what counts. So once you get a cert, I think the knowledge is helpful, but honestly, rather than spending the time and money to renew your cert, spend the time and money at building a portfolio, whether it's a YouTube channel or a blog or a GitHub, because really the best way to show prospective employer I can do the job is by doing the job and having something you can showcase, not just renewing a silly certification. The one exception would be if your organization requires it, but if they require it, they should be paying for renewing the certs as well. If they require it, they can pay for it, not you. But I'm curious what this all actually covers. So it says it validates job tasks performed by a security professional with 10 years of IT experience and five years of security experience. So we have a mix of general IT and security specific stuff performed by a senior security engineer, security architect. So that makes me think it's more technical in nature. Um, is it multiple choice? I'm curious. Be a natural progression from job roles aligned to security plus. Now here's my question, like my initial feedback. Why does someone with 10 years of IT experience and five years of security experience even need the certification? Like when I, when I first got into the field, I chased certs because I needed certs to get my foot in the door. But if you have this much experience in the field, surely you don't need a certification to prove that you know how to do your job. You show you can do your job based on your experience. So that's where it's like, I don't really get the point of advanced certs. Maybe unpopular opinion, but like, for example, I shared before, I have a bunch of certs. I do a lot of training for different certs. So like I've done all of the pen tester path on Hack the Box. I've done all of the bug bounty path on Hack the Box. I've done some of the TCM training, but I haven't taken the certs because like, I don't need them. The, like, for example, the cert for the CC or the, is it the CC? I'm getting all the mixed up. The pen testing cert from Hack the Box or like TCM cert is, hey, take this cert to prove that you can do a penetration test. 
bro, that's all I do. Like my job is a pen tester. I do pen tests every single day. I do debriefs with clients. I do reports. I do CVEs. Why do I need a cert to prove that I can do that? I have nine CVEs and client experience. I don't need a cert to prove it, but I like the training. So for some of these other advanced training, I do the training. I don't take the cert because I don't see the point of needing needing the cert personally. Now, if you're new to the field, you do like newer people, certs make sense. Someone with 10 years of IT experience and five years of security, you don't need this cert. Maybe unpopular opinion. What is the exam? Like what does this consist of? So it covers the technical knowledge and skills required to architect, engineer, integrate, and implement secure solutions marketing. Obviously, I handed this across complex environments to support a resilient enterprise while considering the impact of governance, risk, and compliance. All right. Here's where it, I don't believe this is true. And the reason I don't believe that it's true is I don't like multiple choice exams. All right. Multiple choice exams make sense for entry level certs. A plus multiple choice. I get it. Security plus. I get it. Network plus. I get it. But once you get to an advanced certification, like if CompTIA claims that this cert shows someone has, who has 10 years of experience in IT, five years of experience in security, and has a technical knowledge and skills required to do this, that takes more than a 90 question, 90 question multiple choice exam. That takes hands-on keyboard, configuring things, resolving things, and doing things like that. And from my experience with CompT exams, it's always like there's multiple right answers. You have to choose the best right answer, which is frustrating to me because in the real world, there's so much more complexity that you have to think through and you have to figure it out. So in my opinion, multiple choice exams are a terrible indicator of whether or not someone has a skill to do the job. Some people have test anxiety. They can do the job, but they suck at taking a, a test, and so they fail certs like this, but they do an incredible job. Other people, they do brain dumps. Like You can look up brain dumps for all these different multiple choice exams. I don't recommend it. If you do it, you'll get banned, and you're a fraud, so don't do brain dumps, but a lot of people do it. So just having a certification doesn't mean you can do it. That's where hands-on certs, I think, make the most sense. Certs like the OSCP or TCM certs. I think all of TCM certs are hands-on. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, hack the box certs, all of it hands-on. You're in an environment, you're actually fixing, configuring, defending, pen testing, showing you can actually do it. Now, I do know they have performance-based questions, but from my experience with CompTIA, that's generally five performance-based questions. I could be wrong here, but their other ones are five performance-based questions, and they're kind of performance-based, but really it's just a glorified, a multiple-choice question. You're not actually doing configuring on like a terminal or anything like that. Blah, blah, 160 mi minutes, recommend experience. A minimum of 10 years of general hands-on IT experience, at least five years. Once again, if you have that, you don't need the cert. Don't, don't waste your time. In my opinion, here's where it does matter. This is where it probably makes a lot of sense. If you're working in the government and you need a DOD 8140 um, cert for whatever job level you're trying to get to, that's where it probably makes sense to get a cert like this. But my advice to come to you is, hey, step your game up. Multiple choice exams, let's get rid of them for expert level exams. I get it once again for A plus, network plus, security plus, but if you claim this is an expert level exam, a multiple choice exam does not show whether or not someone is an expert. Hands on uh, is what ends up showing that. So my thoughts on the, what's this called? Security X, formerly CASP X by CompTIA is it just seems like a glorified version of the security plus, or I have the pen test plus as well. And the CYSA plus I have a bunch of CompTIA certs. So I'm not a CompTIA hater by any means, but I don't think expert level exams should be multiple choice. I also think if you have 10 years of experience and five years in security, you don't need a cert to prove it. The exception would be if you work in the government and you need a DOD compliant cert to move to the next job level, then it makes sense. But if you're entry level, well, this cert isn't even for you. So go for the A plus network plus security plus, get the CompTIA trifecta. I think those three things look really well on your resume. But if you wanna get expert level search, look at the hands on search that actually require you hands on keyboard configuring and figuring stuff out. But let me know your thoughts. Maybe I'm way off base. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Those of you in chat, let me know in chat. I'll read through chat after this. Let me know your thoughts. Am I, am I way in left field on this? Am I accurate on this? We'd love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments and I will see you over there.